Welcome everyone, it's February 23rd. It's our school committee meeting. When's the last time we actually were in session on a Monday? That I don't remember. Uh, yeah. It's been a while. Um, we have a big long meeting, so let's see how quickly we can get through a couple of housekeeping things, starting with the minutes. A motion to accept the February 5th minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Which, as I look at the two of you for all of the motions, reminds me to say that Humera sends her regrets. She has uh, just back from a long and exhausting trip from the West Coast. So we move right into the public comment period, and I assume that's why most of you are here, since we usually don't have this many guests at our school committee meeting, because I know you're all watching at home. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let me just quickly tell you, I did text Molly uh, the policy about public comment, but let me just go over it so that everyone knows. That certainly we welcome you, we're glad to have you here. Really, you're welcome every single month. It's their enthralling meetings. Connie Douglas just said so. <laughs> uh, so individual or groups are welcome to comment in the public comment period. period. Speakers are allowed three minutes to present their material. As chair, I can limit the amount of time we spend on public comment. We do have a long, detailed agenda, so I'm going to try to limit this to 15 minutes and we'll reassess if we need more time than that. Um, members of the school committee will not respond to the speakers. You can ask clarifying questions and members of the audience can also ask clarifying questions. I would ask that if you have a clarifying question, let me call on you rather than just scream it out. And then finally, improper conduct and remarks will not be allowed. So no defamatory comments about personnel. Let me remind you that personnel issues are outside the realm of the school committee, and I've had many conversations with many of you about that. So let's open up the public comment period. Do we have one <coughs> or many speakers? We have a microphone up here. Who are you pointing to? Yes? Oh, you go first? oh, I didn't, I didn't, I'm sorry, no, okay. Molly, I didn't see you raise your hand. No problem. Um, so first of all, I just want to say that some people in the room are probably going to find amusement. Um, cause one of my favorite things that I used to say when I was on the school committee for three years was it never ceased to amaze me the level of ferocity around athletics that people um, came to the table. And um, very rarely had sessions like this when people were um, screaming about academic excellence in the classrooms. And yet, tonight, here I find myself standing in front of my former uh, committee mates, um, really wanting to have a conversation about the athletic programs here. Um, but more specifically, uh, what I wanted to address is a concern about human resource policies, procedures, and what I do think is the responsibility of the school committee. Um, there is a commitment to accomplishment, which is a part of your policies, um, AE, if anybody wants to bother to look it up on the, um, in your policy manual, I know some of you spend an awful lot of time with that. And I'm not going to read it, but the gist of it is that the school committee does accept ultimate responsibility for all facets of school operations. And it goes on to talk about really how critical it is that we hold people accountable and that we hold people accountable through specific, specific performance objectives. Um, so that we can evaluate people in the context of those clearly stated objectives, um, that the evaluation of all employees should be in line with stated objectives. So I guess what I wanted to talk about is in light of some recent events, one in particular, um, it has to do with the non-reappointment, um, it's a technical uh, euphemism of the baseball varsity coach. I, I'm hearkening back to my last year on the school committee. And when we had a change in administration at the um, high school level, a lot of us spent time in the room here talking about how critically important it was that we spend less time talking about our athletic programs and who was involved in them and fairness and equity, et cetera, et cetera. And we all agreed that what we needed to do was have very clearly delineated policies and procedures. And I know we had conversation with um, the, school, the new school principal at the time about that. And he was very forthcoming with some outstanding ideas about how we could make sure that going forward, 
people were evaluated fairly, that people were held accountable equally, that there was equity and fairness. And we talked an awful lot about inclusion and what it meant to kind of raise all boats, so to speak, by um, encouraging participation across the board in the athletic programs. And I have to say, um, I'm proud of a lot of things that we accomplished when I was on the school committee for three years. And one of them specifically was the fact that when I walked away from that table, I thought, you know what? At least going forward, the school committee and the new superintendent and the principal will make sure that those excellent ideas are committed to policy and that they're followed religiously so we don't have to keep having all of these conversations and concerns and hallway whisperings about what may or may not be transpiring. Um, I think that we have just lost an incredibly valuable employee. And I have to say that as an employee who is not represented by a union, if I were a non-union employee right now, I'd be a little bit concerned about how human resource policies are going to be carried out going forward. So I just wanted to say that tonight. Questions? No. Any questions? Thank you, Molly. You stayed within the three minutes. Yep. Um, my name is Adam Garrett. I'm a parent um, a student here at the Hopkins and also one at the elementary school. And I, like many other parents who are here today, who I've, I've had the opportunity to speak with, are concerned about that hiring practice, about what's, what's occurred in the non the appointment of Coach Branson as the varsity uh, baseball coach. Um, so, Parents, some parents and I have met and we've tried to gather information to help us understand what occurred here and, and why he wasn't rehired. Um, I'd like to share some of that information with the parents who are here and with the school committee. So we understand Can that, I just uh, interrupt to say, if you start to get in deeply into personnel issues, I may stop you. Okay. okay thanks. Uh, so we understand Coach Branson was hired in 2009 by the prior athletic director, uh, Pat Lemieux. He was hired as the middle school boys baseball coach. Uh, he was subsequent, uh, subsequently re, uh, reappointed to that position the next three years, up through 2012. He was hired um, as the varsity boys baseball coach in 2013, where he was interviewed by a five-member panel consisting of the principal, the athletic director currently, and three other members, one who we believe was uh, the athletic director in the campus. So it looked like a pretty comprehensive um, collection of individuals who would interview and hire in that case. Uh, he was re reappointed to that position in 2014, and currently in 2015 he was not rehired through a interview process, which included uh, the current principal and the current athletic director. Uh, Coach Branson has extensive experience as a player. He played collegiate ball, he played semi-pro baseball. Uh, as a coach here at Hopkins Academy, he was the JV Boys soccer coach. He served two and a half years uh, in that role uh, with an outstanding record of success. As the middle school boys baseball coach, uh, that team never had a losing record. In fact, that team's win-loss record improved every year uh, from 8-8 eight eight to 14-2 and two in that time. As the varsity baseball coach in 2013, he had a team record of 8-11. and 11. His second year, the team uh, had a record of 14-10. and 10. They went on to win the Western Mass Championship, and as you all know, uh, they went on to the state championship final game. So this was the most successful varsity boys baseball team in over 25 years here at Hopkins Academy. The next year, he was not retired. Uh, Coach Branson has a record of personnel evaluations um, that were all positive uh, under Coach uh, under Athletic Director Lemieux. Uh, he received outstanding evaluations as his two years uh, as the varsity baseball coach by the current athletic director. Um, the current contract, the Hadley Teachers contract, has a provision in which uh, the person who holds the position of the coach. Uh, in the previous year, will normally be given first consideration in rehiring. Uh, again, another piece of evidence that leads to the confusion among many parents here in Hadley and in the Hadley school community as to why he was not rehired this year. In fact, the current uh, selection is a person with less experience coaching um, and with less success, much less. Um, 
So some of the, this information, I think we conclude, conclude, we cannot conclude some things. For example, not a more, a more experienced person was not hired over uh, Coach Branson. A more successful coach was uh, not selected. Um, his performance evaluations don't lend any evidence as to why he would not be rehired. Um, and the contractual obligation to give him preferential treatment or preferential consideration does not appear to have been followed. Uh, so again, there there's, appears to be no obvious reason in typical practice over the last <coughs> six years of his tenure as a coach why he would not be rehired as coach this year. Uh, and that raises some questions. And as Molly Keegan pointed out, there are some uh, policy criteria around uh, the commitment to accomplishment school committee policy. And there are provisions there around clear statements and expectations of purpose as they relate to various positions. Um, where, where are these statements in regard to the varsity head coach position for baseball? Um, this policy also includes provision for the staff, resources, and support necessary to achieve uh, expectations and purposes were these articulated to Coach Branson. Um, specific performance objectives to enable individuals to, to direct their own efforts to the goals and objectives of Hadley Public Schools. Did Coach Francis, uh, Coach Branson understand these performance objectives? Were they articulated to him? Did they exist anywhere? Um, and then also the evaluation of the efforts of employees in line with stated objectives with the first purpose of evaluation being to help individuals make a maximum contribution to the Hadley Public Schools. So was, were his evaluations used, used to support him in his endeavors and currently I mean, as the most successful coach? So there are a lot of questions here as were, were this Hadley School Committee policies followed uh, with Mr. Branson. Um, another possible explanation for why he wasn't rehired is perhaps uh, this was retaliation against Mr. Branton for some event or some occurrence that occurred last school year. And certainly the hiring practices. Can I, can I just, you said I can, if someone well, has can a we, Since he's so far over, are you close to done? Right, so this is my yeah. last point. So, okay, Let's so then maybe after that. The possibility that this was retaliation against Coach Branson. Um, we, we know that he did meet with the principal and the, and the athletic director last school year um, to discuss his concern that he was directed by the current athletic director to play certain players more than he was playing them. Um, so that certainly is without, within the realm of possibility since all other logical explanations uh, which would lead one to believe he should be rehired, that conclusion wasn't met. Thank you. So that's all I have. Did you have a clarifying question? Um, I was just looking for more clarification on the retaliation that he was alluding to, but it sounded as if he <coughs> did detail that information. Right. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, and may I ask your name and role so I can read your question in your minutes? Sure. David Graves. And I'm a parent. Thank you, Mr. Graves. You're welcome. May I ask you a call questions about procedure? Um, Adam mentioned, cited back in 2013, I believe, a five member panel interviewed and appointed um, as varsity coach, and in 2015 it was a two person panel. Is there a policy about the composition of that panel or the number of people, as to, or, or why was there a difference between the two years? We do not have an official policy on that. Okay. And, I, there is not an official school committee policy on that. I don't know if there is one different policy. No. Yeah. Would we, I mean, back when it was a five-person panel, was there a rationale as to why it was five people at that time and the representatives that were included on that panel? I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't. That was... Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other public comment? No one else wants to speak. Can I kind of wrap up? Sure. Does anybody else have anything to say? I, I just want to say that all of these parents are here in support of Coach Branson. Um, we hope you will consider staying the decision to not rehire him and to consider 
rehiring him until we have appropriate policy and procedures that can fairly and objectively evaluate our coaching staff. And I have 70 um, signatures and a petition to ask you to consider that. And I probably could have got 300. If 300 makes a difference, I'll go get 300 because I think Thank I you. could easily get that many people. Pretty much everyone I spoke to in Hadley was willing to sign that. And you know that's Lisa Sanders. Yes. And I guess I do have one other question. Will we be able to speak when you bring this up in the regular meeting? The athletics will be we be able to speak again, or is this our only chance to speak? Um, I don't remember. We're, we're not discussing the coaching position. Yeah, we're not discuss, discussing the coaching position in our regular session. We are discussing, what is it called? Policies. Policies, practices, and procedures. Yeah, policies, practices, and procedures. And um, I think generally if there are questions and comments, yes. Although we've got a long agenda, so we'll, it will be within reason. How's that? And Molly, do you still want to close out? Yeah, I mean, if I could just say that, um, well, first of all, if I can try to um, respond to Heather's question, because I was on the school committee at that point, and the rationale, honestly, was that by having um, independent third parties sitting on a hiring committee, it would avoid any sort of appearance of the conflict of, in of a conflict of interest or any sort of undue influence um, when people get to know each other too well, and it would provide objectivity in the hiring process, specifically targeted to people who had skill sets to evaluate, you know, the, either baseball as a program or athletics in general. Um, I think I, some of the um, area athletic directors were actually brought in. And it was clearly intended that that was a practice that would be carried forward. Uh, that was my understanding. But um, just in... That, that practice it has it, not been was not put into any kind of hiring it wasn't policy a, no. for appointments. Right, and in nope. the absence of policy, one tends to default to a practice. Is it de facto kind of becomes your policy, but, um, but it, just in terms of... Yeah. Just in terms of wrapping up, um, as kind of anathema as this is to me, um, I think that uh, under the circumstances, uh, I think a lot of us have spoken and we would like to see um, the decision not to reappoint Coach Branson overturned. And I believe that, um, you know, many of us feel that this is. This is an issue of equity and fairness, and what we want our school district to do in terms of its treatment of everybody that's employed by the district, it's an image issue. Um, again, I know it's unorthodox to ask such a thing, but a lot of us feel very strongly that this was a situation that, um, quite frankly, was just a human resource situation kind of gone bad, and having one individual be punished for it. I mean, not only was there a lack of reappointment, you can say, okay, well, it happens. You know, sometimes people are disappointed in life. But to have it happen at such a late stage and such proximity to the baseball season, that action has prevented an individual who wasn't even told that there was any reason that they should be concerned about their position, has prevented that individual from being employed anywhere else. And in the absence of having a clear explanation as to the non reappointment, you have a situation where somebody is putting themselves out potentially in the public with a perception that there must be something. So, I mean, I just think that we have really done, as a district, this individual a complete disservice. Um, and secondly, I'm hoping that the uh, superintendent, and with the support of the school committee, conducts a very independent investigation into what actually did go on here, what are our policies, practices, how is this being applied, not just for baseball, but all of our other programs. And third, that coming out the other end of this, wherever we dropped the ball when I left the school committee thinking that we'd taken care of this, that you pick that up and you have clearly delineated policies and procedures in place so that when the faces change, people aren't treated in this manner again. I mean, I really think it's a, a blemish on, on the school district right now. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. I know it's a really cold night. I appreciate your... Uh, passion about the issue.
So um, with that, we're going to move on to our information and discussion items. And 